All right. Thank Thanks, you. everyone, for joining us for tonight's team call. We have Darren Olin here, which is crazy exciting. And I'm just like, what? So excited. Um, I'm not going, I mean, I think most people do know who Darren is. Um, we do have a couple of new coaches on the call. So for those of you that don't know Darren, he is a co-creator of Shakeology and they call him like the, the superfood guru. So he legit goes around to all the countries and, and works with the farmers there and picks out the superfoods and you can Google his name and find him like holding this crazy exotic superfood and um it's just incredible what he has created um by you know a, lo a lot of his story is kind of like our story where we came from somewhere where we were either unhealthy or we needed to find something to solve our problems and that's exactly what Darren did and I'm sure he'll kind of talk about his background so I'm going to shut up um, and let Darren take it over um, we are so excited and thank you so very much for being on with us Awesome. Thank you. I appreciate it. It's uh, equally my pleasure. Um, I love talking about health and nutrition and obviously Shakeology and superfoods. So um, yeah, so I have, you, know, you guys sent me the questions. I have those, but, but for those of you who, you know, the quick, the really quick uh, intro is that um, I, I needed to fill a void um, myself with uh, health and nutrition. And it really started back when I was, uh, you know, uh, three and a half pounds um, when I was premature. Uh, the reason I say that is because my, my need and my necessity and my programming right away was our bodies are fragile, they're weak, uh, we're vulnerable. So that, that hit me right away. Um, as a kid, as an adolescent, I had uh, several things going on that I had to overcome with my body. Um, and, and really, it came to um, overcoming those things, playing college football, and then a career-ending back injury derailed that career, and I had to stop. And, and ultimately, from my journey of a, as a kid to an adult, I realized, oh, I can actually study this stuff. I can actually do it for my own necessity, and let's see what happens from there. And so I studied physiology, nutrition, and that was just the start of the curiosity. And then from there, when I started playing with functional foods and supplements, I started seeing things in the marketplace that I, that I wasn't okay with, that I didn't like, and that most people didn't understand truly where their food came from. So from that, I had to travel. Like it's in my DNA. I'm a Minnesota kid from, you know, surrounded by agriculture. My dad was a professor of um, uh, ag, uh, agricultural business economics for the University of Minnesota. So it's in my blood. And so it didn't make sense for me to sit behind a lab coat and just throw this stuff together, I had to go travel. So that's, that's how this ended up. Uh, it just so happens that Isabel and I ran into each other um, while um, I had already been traveling to many places around this globe. And then it was just a perfect synergy, like um, to help them out with this, uh, uh, this healthy, uh, alternative to what we're lacking in our food. And that's really where I'll just give this a little bit and I'll hit the questions, but it was really Isabel and I really saw a gap in people's nutrition. And there's reasons for that, that you can look up to, but it's, uh, you know, since the early 1900s, Congress and the agricultural community knew that our foods were completely being depleted and thereby we need the micronutrients to be healthy. Um, and then on top of it, we're living this kind of artificially stressful life. Um, and when you're stressed, you need your demands for nutrients go up as well. So it's kind of this, this perfect storm of foods that we're living under. And then the third factor is toxins that we're getting hit with from the air, from the water, from the food, all of those things, we looked very seriously at what if we 
created a formula of some of the greatest botanicals in the world from around the world that have been used for some of them thousands and thousands, tens of thousands of years from traditional Chinese medicine and from uh, uh, Ayurveda, all of these things and all of these botanicals we could then carefully process, test for the active compounds, carefully process to get them in a stable powder so that they can still promote their healthy benefits. And that's really the very quick version of how Shakeology kind of came to be. Um, it's very important for everyone that doesn't know that's been a coach um, and all the new people that it's very important that, that you have two people, Isabel and I, that have dedicated our lives to this. And now we have uh, teams and teams of people from quality assurance um, and from research and development to making sure that, that what's in that bag is supposed to be there and at the quality that uh, we require. So, okay. All right, that being said, as the warm up, uh, okay, so number one question with all the coaches I've talked to over the years, um, from a businessman's perspective, oh boy, uh, uh, what's the approach for getting new Shakeology through using social media? You know, that's a really good question. I certainly wouldn't have um, uh, the the perfect um, place for that. I think, I, th I think the approach is that when people understand that you're living a healthy lifestyle, that you're practicing what you preach, that you know, like Carl always says, you're a product of the product. And I don't even necessarily like that necessarily as it's because it, it makes it about a product. When in fact, Shakeology again, from the creator to you, the Shakeology was there to fill in the gaps of where we're at in our society right now. So if you are acting in a way that it is integrity with you and you share that with social media and, and truthful conversations on YouTube, on Instagram, on Facebook, then that authenticity is real, right? So it's real and it's coming through and you're not selling anything, you're sharing from your truth. You're sharing from what works, what, what makes you feel good, and that you start to align with yourself. And, and also using social media as a way to like, hey, promise yourself, I'm gonna post about health or about how my experience, about my life every day. It kind of holds you too. You can use social media as kind of being a truth serum for you. As like, if you show yourself as like, hey, I'm gonna show up every day and live according to not trying to sell anything, but live according to a healthy way, then social media can actually act as a watcher of you and keep you maybe on target more and more. And then through that authentic voice, you could say, hey, you know, I, I didn't eat well for breakfast this morning. I had syrup and waffles and it makes me feel like crap. And I don't know why I did that, but I'm not going to do it anymore. And then for lunch, I'm going to have a salad. I'm not going to beat myself up about it. But really using truth as a way of sharing, I think, I think that is, then you're not trying to do something. You're not trying to be the, the perfect social media guru. It's just, you know, share truthfully. Um, and that's, you know, why it's so fantastic to work with someone like Isabel is because she, from day one, she is who she is and I'm who I am and we share from that place and, and which is why we love sharing with you guys, which is why we love sharing the truth of, of what we've dedicated our lives to. So that's, that's what I would say about social media. Um, and use it in an appropriate way, and, and just as a truth serum, and, and maybe accountability for yourself too, and holding yourself to a, a level that you, you know, it's almost like uh, living with the end in mind, right? So where would you like to be in a year from now? Would you like to be vibrant and healthy and energetic and and uh, doing other things and, and um living a, a, a life that you want. Well, you have to align yourself 
with the daily practice of that. That could be waking up extra early so you can get clear with your intentions. It could be making sure you're getting in your superfoods at certain periods of time, preparing meals, like it's all of that stuff. So anyway, that's what I would share on social media. So, okay, so number two, what is the best way to explain to customers why Shakeology should be a lifestyle versus a weight loss? If you find yourself talking about weight loss or you find yourself talking about it's a protein shake, then stop talking. <laughs> Just stop because you're off. Uh, and that kind of conversation will get you into a pigeonhole that is hard to get out of. Because listen, Shakeology, if it's a wheel, it's one spoke that protein exists in there. It's one spoke that it helps facilitate the body uh, to, to ward off weight. The bottom line is with weight loss, there's no magic to it other than showing up, other than uh, obviously moving your body, but eating well, sleeping well, drinking good water, uh, having good relationships. I mean, all of these things literally will promote health in your body or will increase stress or increase inflammation or, or holding on to things. I mean, all of this stuff. So the way I would explain uh, Shakeology is something to the effect of this. And you can, you can take bits and pieces of it. I would say Shakeology is uh, filling in the gaps of some of the greatest botanicals in the world that have been used for thousands of years to help people facilitate optimal health so that you can get the micronutrients that your body, that your cells require, therefore cr creating the groundwork for your body to thrive. When your body thrives, it lets go of stress. It lets go of weight. It regulates itself. Uh, and trusting your body by giving it good sustenance and nutrients, your body knows what to do. Your body knows how to do it. So I would set it up in a way that Shakeology is a part of a lifestyle. And it is a part, a very, very important part in our modern day world that we are getting uh, superfoods, that are we getting adaptogens, that are we getting enzymes, that are we getting prebiotics and probiotics. We're getting prebiotics and probiotics helping them, the microbiome, which is incredibly important for the body to facilitate health. We're giving the body enzymes that help kind of the workhorse of the body. We're giving it tons of adaptogens, uh, chaga, ashwagandha, shizandra, stragalus, cordyceps, mataki, shiitake, all of these things are powerful adaptogens that help your body facilitate and deal with stress. So these things, and I'll give you a piece of homework, um, why don't you look up one of the adaptogens? Just spend five minutes, five minutes. Look up, look up an article, look up some research, whatever, just read about it. You don't have to become a nutritionist, but know, like look up maca, look up a shizandra, look up astragalus, look up ashwagandha, look up one of those things and realize that these things are incredible botanicals, okay? So then that starts infusing and you start to really go, wow, that these are powerful. So that's, you're coming into conversations with, you don't need to be a nutritionist, but you need to understand that this is a very powerful part of our modern day world that when you're giving your body what it needs, and unfortunately, from my point of view, having a bag of dried, uh, procured quality superfoods uh, are necessary in this day and age. If you read one of those adaptogens, then I dare you to think that we shouldn't require almost some of these botanicals. You'll be amazed. You'll be like, understand that. It's not about my point of view that you should drink it every day from a marketing standpoint. 
it's my point of view, Isabel's point of view, that we believe you should drink it every day because it's providing you incredible building blocks of botanicals to help your body. And when your body's helped, it takes care of itself largely on its own. Okay. All right. So, um, what does the, how does the body lose weight on the reset with so much healthy fat? Uh, like what is the body doing with the process and differently and why all the emotional changes? Those are good questions. So, um, how does the body lose weight on the ultimate reset? There's a zillion different ways that I can answer this question. Uh, and it's a massive topic. Um, so obviously what the reset, you're kind of taking the first few days and you're eliminating uh, meat and fish and dairy, right? So in just as the course of eating meat and dairy, there's a thing called, there's this one compound, I won't mention any more, but there's a thing called arachidonic acid. And arachidonic acid creates instantly inflammatory responses in the body. Now, if you balance, like I'm not trying to promote you as, I'm a vegan, but I'm not telling you you need to be, I'm just telling you what happens. So if you're constantly eating meat and processed foods, it's triggering these stressful, uh, acidic scavengers in the body. So number one, you've eliminated that. So now the body is put in this calm, calming place where it's able to then facilitate and balance more of itself just by the nature of just eating plants and by eating a lot more plants than most people. And on top of it, with eating all those plants, you've increased your fiber intake by some people by three, four, five times. So fiber, look that up. I mean, just by fiber alone, is, is completely helping shift the microbiome in, in your, in your um, digestive tract. It's in helping to improve the immune system. It's slowing down the, the absorption of sugars, all of this on and on and on. And of course, it's increasing healthy bowel activity. It's scrubbing and cleansing the bowel. There's tons of things that are going on. So all of that being said, when you just start eating healthier with, with foods that are more nourishing to you, your body is not fighting kind of these foods that we may emotionally want to eat, but they're largely uh, creating some havoc in the body. Emotionally, if you're now changing your microbiome, so you're changing the, the effect of microorganisms that are in your body that no longer are scavenging for car, uh, carnivorous microorganisms, so they're switching. So you're kind of changing the rainforest inside your body. So then what happens is the natural serotonin productions in the body, in the gut, 90% of those feel-good molecules live in the Neuro, neurology of the gut. So, so because of that, now there's emotional states and there's uh, neurological states that you're actually helping to facilitate. This is very, very powerful. You can do a bunch of research on some of the micro, microbiome stuff, microflora, as it relates to good mood. Second piece of homework. <laughs> fascinating, fascinating stuff. So all of that stuff, again, we kept it really simple. Eat really well. And if any of you have done, it sounds like a bunch of you have done the Ultimate Reset, the food is fantastic. It's delicious. You're celebrating food, right? And that's the important thing. Obviously, it's, you know, there's some heavy lifting if you're not used to cooking so much, but then you start planning stuff out and you start figuring out a system. Once you figure out a system, it can be moved right into a lifestyle. So, so anyway, that's, that's some of the stuff on the ultimate reset, ultimate reset. If any of you have read my book, it goes deep down some of these corridors of, of what really the ultimate reset is based in. 
So you can check out my book, no problem. I'm not even trying to plug it, but it's true that there's a lot of information in there. Um, so super life. Um, okay, so next question. What are the best resources for us to help our challenges with people's nutrition? Uh, there's tons. Um, you know, there's some great, you know, I, I, I lean towards uh, doctors that have done tons of research um, that started in research. So a very uh, a good friend and uh, he's got an incredible uh, nutritionfacts.org. Uh, he's an MD, he's a researcher, and he started out not, not setting up a nonprofit so he was not compromised so he could just go out and find the research. And he found research to support eating tons of plants uh, will largely lead you towards a healthy, healthy lifestyle. Largely meaning it's gonna really help. So, uh, Dr. Gregor, nutritionfacts.org, he's got a great book. Dr. Joel Furman, heavy research guy. Uh, these guys are rooted in, um, how do I say, non compromised research. Not all research is. Um, uh, directly, uh, unfortunately, saying what they're manipulating, saying, unfortunately, a lot of research is funded by organizations, big pharma, all these things that uh, slant it towards their uh, desired points of view, which is why I love Dr. Joel Furman, Dr. Gregor, uh, Dr. Dean Ornish, uh, Joel Esselstein, all of these guys have spent a lifetime doing this stuff. So there's more, but those guys in many of their books are fantastic. Um, what else? Okay, so next question. What does a day of food look like for me? Um, well, I start my day about 4 a.m. Um, I slam a liter of water. Uh, I then typically will create a little tonic or elixir. A lot of times I will just add um, some uh, adaptogens, plus I will put focused energy uh, and uh, some coconut cream and make a little morning tonic. I'll go do start my meditations. I'll do uh, a lot of writing about what I want to create. Um, uh, I'll start returning emails, blah, blah, blah. I'll go work out, um, around eight. When I get back around 10, I'll pro that, that's usually my gate gateway to, to take down Shakeology. Uh, and then about noon, I'm eating my first meal. Uh, and it's usually as simple as it is. It's a massive salad with tons of greens and microgreens and sprouted greens uh, tons of baru nuts, uh, these, these baruca nuts that I found in the, in the, in Brazil, uh, most nutritious, not on the planet. Uh, and, uh, usually a hummus or a, I'm, I'm really into this turmeric dressing, which is fantastic. And then there might be, uh, some rice cakes with avocado on it, uh, some coconut yogurt uh, on top of that. And that's, that's a, you know, a variety of greens, but that's kind of my lunch. It's light, but it fills me up. It's really good. And then I'm usually nothing, unless I like do a tea in the afternoon, but I'm usually nothing. And I eat about 5 p.m. usually. Uh, and um, I will make, like I made an incredible vegetable soup tonight. Uh, and I'm going to tear into it right after this um and it's some variety of that you know uh i'm not afraid of carbs at all i'm not afraid of healthy sugar and in in uh fruits and all of these things at all i eat lots of beans and legumes and nuts and seeds uh like i said lots of greens um that's that's kind of it uh it, basically two, uh, you know, some teas in the morning and that's, that's it. And, uh, 
I'm as strong as I've ever been. Uh, and I've been kind of eating like that for a decade. So that's kind of, that's kind of what's happening for me. Um, now women, because so, so I have a little bit of a fast window. I don't recommend women uh, uh, not eat for that amount of time. So basically, I don't really eat from 6 p.m. the night before to uh, my first meals at noon. Well, Shakeology at like 1030. So I don't recommend that for women because it's a different hormonal uh, situation. But uh, you still can eat sensibly and maybe get another meal in there. Uh, I just want to say, oh, yeah, we're good. Um, how do we safeguard ourselves from GMO foods uh, and do the best we can with all the confusion, misleading information? Great question. Uh, this is a this is a big deal. This is a really, really big deal. Because GMOs, you got pesticides, herbicides. You got the got the active compound in the pesticides, herbicides called glyphosate. Glyphosate is is showing up everywhere. Uh, that's causing most of the digestive disturbances in in uh, our our populations uh, and all sorts of other things. Um, so. Uh, do your best buy all organic, uh, in a, you know, and, and disturbingly enough, organic uh, uh, is is being not that GMOs are technically getting into organic, but you know, there's there's some fights going on within the big pharma world. Um, uh, what's the website? There's a website called uh, uh, I think it's called Food Freedom Now. So I've met uh, one of the leading researchers with glyphosate uh, just last week, uh, and he is so he's not paranoid. He's just been threatened. So I had to talk to him through Zoom. He wouldn't even call uh, through the phone. And he's a fellow Midwestern Iowa guy. Uh, so he's not some weird. Uh, uh, you know, conspiracy guy. He's doing some real good work. So that's a big deal. Um, uh, you know, do everything you can to buy local food from people that you know. Uh, again, support companies that are not allowing GMO ingredients. We don't. Um, so, uh, and if you can't find the information, if they are not telling you, then do not buy it. I just wouldn't, I wouldn't gamble with you. I wouldn't gamble with your family. It's a DNA disruptor. Uh, and you don't want to take that bet because it will harm you down the line. Um, it's, it's very, very unfortunate that these GMO companies are not um, allowing to be told uh, the public. Um, they're, they're sneaking it in. And if you see an Arctic apple show up anywhere, stay away from it. That's the first fruit that's been genetically modified uh, and no one's telling you about it. So uh, do not eat an Arctic apple under any circumstances. So uh, yeah, so it's a scary world and we're dealing with, I'm not gonna get into this too much, but we're dealing with a lot of money uh, and people that don't care. Um, I'm starting to also work and endorse, uh, be potentially be an endorser for the Alliance of Natural Health, who have, I would check them out, get on the newsletter. Uh, they have about a half a million people and they go to lobby for these things, trying to get the public to at least have choice uh, to be informed. So um, thanks for the question. Uh, it's a big, it's a big one. So anyway, uh, you know, I think that's it. I got a boogie, but um, I just will say that, uh, you know, back in the day when Carl took this on and said, you guys can formulate and not worry about cost. Let me worry about selling it. Um, and 
Carl to this day could have put so much money in his pocket, meaning Beachbody could have put so much money, but we constantly go to improve that formula. So when you see things show up like the, you know, the chaga and the moringa and the matcha and these, these are big deals that we've spent years um, working on and we're always improving the formula. Some of which you'll never see or know, but that's who we are. Uh, and that's something I'm proud of. Um, so, so, so share it. It's not about selling it. It's about understanding where we're at in our modern day. Understand that our foods just aren't the way they are anymore. Uh, and we all could use more nutrient dense foods. That's my point of view. That's why, uh, we created it. Uh, and it just so happens we're connected to a company that knows how to share it. Um, so I feel fortunate. You should feel fortunate that we have, like I said, some of the greatest botanicals in the world that we've gathered from around the globe and made it so that that journey of that ingredient is safe. It's at the quality that we require. It's at the fingerprint. We take a fingerprint of these botanicals. Uh, we audit the facilities in all these countries with our eyes, with our people, to making sure that just you can't just turn that bag over and see the ingredients and, and, and know that. That's why we share that. And, and other competitors may come and, well, we've got it in there too, but they don't know, uh, they don't have the relationships. They don't have the quality assurance. They don't have the research and development. We do, and we spend millions and millions of dollars to making sure that that powder that may just seem like powder is uh, got the active constituents, the micronutrients that we have worked so hard to uh, preserve and maintain so that you guys can get it and have the nutrients to support your body. So ultimately, this is my point of view, if you have a healthy body, then you get to have a greater life. If you are sick and tired and beat up, you're not gonna be able to fulfill the dreams that you're ultimately here for. So I will just say this, I can be looked at as maybe extreme, but I just have a bunch of habits in place to take care of myself uh, and so that I don't have to think about it, so that I can do and respond to life because um, I don't want a body that's going to limit my goal of living. So that's, that's in the DNA of Shakeology, all of that that I just said. That's in the DNA of why we put it together. So anyway, that's it. So on that note, have a happy, happy Thanksgiving. Uh, if you're going to eat turkey, I'm sorry. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, then just may, make, sure, make sure you pay the extra money for an organic one um, and give a little prayer for that turkey as well. Um, and enjoy the holiday. You don't have to go off the rails. Eat sensibly uh, and, and have fun with your friends and family, okay? Thank you, Darren, and we got school tonight. Like this stuff you taught us, like you are our teacher. This is amazing, and thank you for fighting this good fight with us because I know it's hard to go against those big companies and all the crap that's out there, but you're fighting for us and we're fighting right along with you, so thank you. It's a good fight. It's a really, yes. really good fight, and it helps us all sleep good at night knowing that we're taking care of ourselves and ultimately voting with our dollars with what we buy and what we put in our mouths of ourselves and our family. So it's important. Totally. All right. Thank you, everyone. Happy Thanksgiving. Take care. Cheers. Thank you, everyone.